Fat Joe shares his view on Wendy Williams' situation and her documentary, so let's get to it. Wendy Williams, I had nightmares last night. I had nightmares last night. I watched it. I watched the whole thing. One, two, three. Uh, Wendy Williams has said terrible things about me. At one time in my life, she would say whatever she wanted. You know, that's what she did. She invented the, uh, you know, the clout talk where you talked and, and, and it was shock jock and she talked shit about a lot of people, man. And, um, and so now we've seen this documentary. When we didn't see the documentary and I talked to different artists about her, pretty much their perception was, it was karma. She used to talk about everybody. Real talk. And before she got sick or whatever the case may be, I found a way in my heart because Jesus forgave to forgive uh, Wendy Williams and become cool with her. Now, Joe, but you haven't forgiven of it. If you never robbed me, if you never stole money, Fuck my wife. Uh, my arch enemy. I can find a way to forgive you. I will forgive you. But, and so talk is cheap. So what they talking about and what she used to talk about didn't mean much to me. But there's some people that will take it to the grave. Now, um... It's one of the saddest things I've ever seen, right? But what this means, though, right? Somebody who's so famous, somebody who built an empire, because Wendy Williams owned her own show. She had her own production company. In fact, this documentary is under her production company. Her son, Kevin Hunter Jr., was executive producer. Now, this show, documentary, it's all transparency. And so when you're an artist, when you're a public figure, when you're famous like that, our lives become of service to the people. Our lives become of service to the people and I would figure that her family and Wendy wanted this ad so we could learn either from her mistakes or be in a similar situation or just learn periodly so Wendy has a loving bonding family her sister went on there and said look we don't even want the money if that's what y'all worried about, y'all want to keep the money? We don't even want the money. You know what's crazy is I, my sister died. My sister was giving birth. And she got into a coma because the epidural went from the waist up. In the papers that the hospital gave us, they said they killed, K-I-L-L-E-D, my sister. In the hospital while giving birth. It wasn't like it was a mistake. It wasn't like this. They said killed. Right? My nephew. We got him $2 million in the lawsuit. He was 8 years old. We raised him. When he became 18. We took him to the lawyer. Told the lawyer. Yo. This is his. This is his money. Write it over to him. The lawyer tells me in front of my nephew. You are the first family that ever had a lawsuit that never found a way to spend the money or say your nephew got to go to a private school for 200000 a year. Your nephew needs a Lamborghini to drive to the store. You mean, so what people do when they're in charge and they're custodians of money is they take advantage and they spend your money. So her family, who seemed to be 
a super honest family, loving family, say, hey, give it to us, man. We don't even, if y'all worried about the money, we don't even need that. We want our sister, we want to help her get better. I don't know if she's going through dementia, they said that. She obviously got a drinking problem. But somewhere in there is still Wendy. Like you would see her pop out. And she knew how to take shots. She be like, yeah, I'm, just, I'm divorced now. But he's broke. Hmm. And go back into the... It's crazy because Wendy is Wendy. Like somewhere in there is Wendy Williams. Um, And she's always entertaining. It's crazy as they gave her a tabloid and she looked at it in one second. She said, ooh, Jennifer ain't going for that. This one ain't going, like, and so that Wendy Williams that everybody loves, her TV show was number one for like 14 years in a row, uh, is in there somewhere, right? But what's sad is how somebody could make you look like you're unfit, but you don't have the mentality almost like Britney Spears, where they take your empire and they spend it how they want to. Now, I don't know who her manager dude was. He definitely, let me tell you something. I'm Fat Joe the Rap. I've been rapping for 30 years. Uh, every day, Louis Vuitton, every day, Fly. That's what I like to do. Every day, looking great. But even me, who's doing great, and at the prime of my life financially, I have friends that be like, yo, slow up the Louis, slow up the Christian Dior, slow up the this. Somehow her manager was dipper fresh than me. Had more Louis, more Gucci, more this. Now, I don't want to call him out. I don't know what his success is, where he gets his money from, whatever the case may be. But there's obviously people that were pushing her to do a doc, uh, podcast. At the state, I've seen the documentary. She is unfit to do that. And so people are pushing her. This gives me the DMX theory. You know, DMX had a, a drug problem. And he had people around him and I would ask him like, yo, why you ain't telling him this and this? And they'd be like, yo, he'll fire us. So in other words, you have to be an enabler or you get fired. And rest in peace to the God DMX. But I'm just giving you uh, a reflection of what goes on, you know, and people want to be attached to greatness. And I don't care even if Wendy's doing bad right now, she's still greatness. She's still one of the greatest that did it. Successful woman. Uh, at her worst, she's still better than most people. And so, I ended up with the apartment being empty. I get it. Her legs are bad. She got to walk up the stairs. If you didn't know why she kept showing people her feet, is the doctor says she had a 2% chance to ever walk again. And the fact that she was still walking, she was proud of it. All praises to God. And so, it was sad to me that people would pray on somebody. And right in front of us, when Wendy Williams did the Walk of Fame, there was millions of people out there. When she did a show, every day we seen people cheering. Everything, I mean, what can we do? If we love her, if we love what she did for pop culture, American culture, what can we do to help Wendy Williams? That should be the number one petition. How can we help Wendy Williams? Wendy Williams definitely needs a family. She needs to be surrounded by love, like her son, her sister, her niece. Um, and I champion for that over everything. You know, um, and once you take care of your health, 
you take care of your mental stability, then maybe you could spin uh, the block back and say, uh, now maybe I want to work again, if you want to work again. And so uh, that's what I think about the Wendy Williams. It was very sad to see her in that state. Sad to see that she had been taken advantage of. Sad to see that they could take perfect strangers and give them your money. That's scary. That's scary. All you got to be is a little unstable and somebody can make it look like your mind ain't right and now they run. It's unbelievable some of the things that happen right in our face and there's nothing we can do about it.